rappers who have done shady things to get to the top. Um, do you feel like that was something that you regret or do you? <laughs> do you want to win any of these items on your screen? If so, be sure to watch the whole video, leave a like and comment the hidden message. And with that being said, let's get right into the video. When it comes to the world of rap, you have to sometimes make a big splash in order to get in the door. Usually that means good music, but other times it means getting controversial in some ways, you know, being shady. There are many rappers who have used shady tactics to make it as far as they have. So be sure to like the video and subscribe to King Trending. Number five, Cardi B and Offset. From a rapper who uses his songs to stay on top to a couple who uses their relationship to make sure everyone is talking about them, let's talk about Cardi B and Offset. Cardi B is one of the biggest names in rap right now, and Offset is part of a very popular rap group called Migos. Things started out slow as they should, they met, became friends, got involved, and then had a secret wedding in 2017 to the shock of many. Then that marriage produced a baby girl named Culture. <laughs> Yes. Everything sounds like it should. A very normal relationship, but out of the blue. Cardi B went on Instagram, which she has millions of followers, and proclaimed to the world that she was separating from her husband Offset. So what were the reasons for said separation? Well, simple. She claimed that they tried to work things out, but couldn't. And past sins on the part of Offset were too much to bear and all that. To be fair, Offset has done some very bad things, including things that he did during his marriage with Cardi B. These were never my intentions, and I never wanted um, to break up a happy home. So if they were to separate, there were plenty of reasons for it to be real. But then people noticed the way that Cardi B was unveiling the situation, and it really didn't feel right. It felt staged for the lack of a better term. And then things started to get weird when things happened on stage. Mainly Offset surprising Cardi B at one of her concerts and begging her to take him back, even having a flower float saying that very same thing. Which is not just convenient, it felt like a setup. Because how do you even get a working microphone on stage, let alone a float on stage without anyone noticing? Exactly. A bit later on, some of their sources said they would be both spending Christmas and New Year's Eve apart from each other for various reasons. But when you fast forward to December 21st, the two of them were actually caught together in Puerto Rico. Doing what exactly, you may be asking? Having fun on a jet ski. Which isn't really something separated people do, for the record, let alone in Puerto Rico. Cardi B tried to explain why they were there together, but it was a big lie as this whole separation was. Eventually, they ended the charade by going to the Grammys together, making out on the red carpet, and Cardi B dedicating her Grammy win to Offset. Set. Oh, and their explanation for all of this at the Grammys? Successful marriage counseling. Yeah, sure. This is one of the worst kinds of shadiness because you're using your relationship and your fans' connection to that relationship and the media's desire to report on the relationship issues and turning it into publicity. Because the two recently released a track and music video called Cloud and it got all sorts of attention because of them being together in it. Number four, Lil Pump. And all that. And I came to declare for my part that I'm sorry and I apologize for posting that. It was not my intentions. Okay, this time we're definitely going to be talking about a rapper and one who is a bit of a trendsetter in the worst possible ways. And speaking, of course, of Lil Pump. To be fair to him, he didn't really start out as a guy doing shady things. He didn't even want to be in the music industry at first. But that all changed when a friend asked him to help out on a rap album. And then he later on grew to love it so much that he started to become a rapper himself, eventually becoming Lil Pump. After some mixtapes, he eventually made a song called Gucci Gang, which set him up for the big times, including an $8 million deal with Warner Brother Records. So what's the shadiness in all of this? Simply, despite him using very logical and fair means to try and get his success, he's taken it to a whole new level just to try and keep it, mainly on his social media pages where he does all sorts of dumb and sometimes derogatory and often sometimes offensive things to get people to follow him, such as the time that he got arrested and actually did a live stream in order to berate the cops who were driving him to the police station. He's also the kind of guy who sings about very explicit things and makes racial slurs, such as his song Butterfly Doors, to get people to pay attention to him, and it's really bad. What's worse is that this trend that he sets not only works, but there are apparently other people in various record labels trying to mimic this success. I guess any money brought in is good money. Regardless of whether you like him or not, it's clear that he's not afraid to say anything or do anything to continue his fame, which might come back to bite him in the end. Number three, Dr. Dre. If there is a name more revered in the rap world than that of Dr. Dre, I don't know who it is. Dr. Dre started out with nothing. They found his first piece of fame with the legendary rap group N.W.A. After he split up from the group, his solo career took off in numerous ways. He founded a record label that brought Eminem, 50 Cent, and many more to the rap world. As if that wasn't enough, he eventually made the legendary Beats by Dre headphone line, one that eventually was bought out by Apple for $2 billion. That being said, he did some shady things during his time with N.W.A., one act of which was his rushing of a reporter who had been bad-mouthing the group. 
crew. This happened back in 1991. A host named Denise Barnes was throwing some words at the group that they didn't like. So during a release party, Dr. Dre mistreated her. She took him to court, but settled out of it. And Dr. Dre took a slap of the wrist in terms of what he did in order to make up for his mistake. Whether it was real or not in terms of the story told to us is up for debate. But it would line up with the way NWA was back in the day. And it likely helped grow the fire that the group had back then. Number two, Kanye West. I, I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. I personally feel that when it comes to shadiness, Kanye West is king. Mainly because of his type of shadiness is both the most overt and unintentional of the bunch. And we've had some people do some really shady things to get to the top, but at times Kanye does things that are so random, you almost have to wonder if he's just being a jerk or mastermind behind his own career while pretending to be a jerk. Either way, it's shady. Let's start off with one of the most obvious cases during the music video awards. Taylor Swift pulled off a major upset by beating Beyonce for an award. But did Taylor Swift get to celebrate. No, because Kanye got on stage, took the microphone, and basically said that while Swift was good, Beyonce was better. And this caused a whole stir backstage, in front of the stage, and on the internet, and much more. The single act brought upon the world against Kanye, including the president of the United States at the time, Barack Obama. Coming in just to say how much of a jerk, but with stronger language, Kanye West was. The backlash to this was huge, and for all the right reasons. He had no right to do that to Taylor Swift. But he felt that this would be the end of his career because he was already slipping in terms of some songs and importance, and then he does this, which should have been a torpedo to any of the chances he had to make it back to the top, but instead he goes and takes that hate and turns it around into one of his most popular songs of all time, Power, a song that has been used in an infinite amount of times for various movies, TV shows, and even video games like Saint Rose the Third. So you tell me, was this just something that just happened, or did he turn it around for his advantage? Or was it planned from the start, and he knew the fame and infamy that he would get from it, which would lead to a career comeback? You tell me. Oh, but we're not done there, in recent years Kanye West has come out and admitted that he has a mental condition, specifically that he's bipolar, which explains a lot. And for a long time, he was on medicine for it, until he started to refuse his medication and started acting out a lot more. This led to many things, including numerous outbursts on interviews with Ellen DeGeneres and folks on Sirius XM. It also led to one of the most infamous moments of his career, when back in December of 2018, he went on a three-hour Twitter rant after having a brief conversation with a rival, who used to be a good friend, Drake. Drake asked for something from Kanye, and Kanye exploded because of it. He went postal on Twitter and talked about Drake in horrible ways, then veering off and talking about just about anything that came to his mind for three hours. But again, it put him in the spotlight and it shined a light on him, which may have been the whole point, because it goes back to one of the rules of fame, any publicity is good publicity. Right? Well, I mean, that's what they say, and Kanye no doubt knows that by now that he'll never be a good guy in terms of reputation, so he goes and does things that are so out there and crazy that people can't help but cover him. Like his Sunday service at Coachella, or his song, I Love It, that he did with Lil Pump, and so on and so forth. And of course, he's also married to Kim Kardashian, who is the queen of shady things. But that's another topic for another time, so let's just say the shady king has got to be Kanye West, even if he doesn't even realize what he's doing. Number one, Ariana Grande. Okay, I know what you're saying. Ariana Grande isn't a rapper. And yeah, you're technically right. She's more of a pop and hip hop artist, if anything else, but she has dated rappers in the past. More than one, actually, and that makes her a rapper by association, which is appropriate because of her deal in terms of shadiness and how she deals with relationships. To be clear, though, Grande has had a long career, even though she's in her 20s, and has worked hard to get to where she is. Some shadiness aside, she started out as a singer on Broadway, believe it or not, and then went on to be a star on multiple television shows on Nickelodeon, and then slowly progressed her life into the music world where she still makes music obviously to the delight of her fans. She clearly came up with these songs and they clearly resonate with fans across the world. So there's no shadiness there per se until you look deeply into one of her recent mega hits and see that she used some things against some other people to make her look better. This whole shadiness deal involves a single song, Thank You Next. And the track you'll hear her sing about all of her ex-boyfriends since she became famous and thanking them for the lessons that they have taught her. At first, it seems like a typical love song. If it was a non-rapper list, you'd hear me talking about Taylor Swift now she uses her former relationships to make hit songs quite similar. But it's more than that, because when you look at it in a certain way, you're going to see that Grande actually got with many of these guys to use their fame to boost herself up. Then when she was done with the dating scene, she decided to do them one more service by singing about them in a tune that again makes her look like an angel, and them not so much. To be fair, not all of these relationships were marks, and Grande has admitted to truly being in love with some of them, but her two most recent relationships, Mac Miller and Pete Davidson, it definitely had the feeling that there was more of a fame angle going on than rather true love at times. Mac Miller was her boyfriend for over two years, and the two 
two did a lot of music and promotions together. Grande even noted that during one of her darkest moments in her life, he was there for her. Yet the rumors of mistreatment began to surface and fans rallied to her. And when she dumped him, the fan support grew even more, making her a very sympathetic person in the eyes of the world. Now you may be saying, and the story? Well, not quite. Because no sooner did she leave Mac Miller than she met and dated and engaged Saturday Night Live comedian Pete Davidson. And to be clear, this was truly a world -rend relationship. They met, dated, and then engaged to be married in the course of weeks. Weeks! Doesn't that sound suspicious to you? And then when the media tried to blast her for this and Davidson, she didn't take that lightly. She fired back at them in songs like The Light Is Coming, condemning them for thinking that they know about their love and all that. The only reason that she wasn't with Davidson by the end of 2018 was because of the passing of Mac Miller, which seemed to dredge up old feelings of her as well as realizing that she needed to focus on herself and her music rather than her relationship status. And what came out not long after that revelation? Thank you, Next. One of her biggest songs ever. No, really, it's a mega hit by every stretch of the imagination. It blew up on social media, and the music video itself, which incorporated many famous teen love stories in some form or another, was a major hit on YouTube. It has 367 million views on it. No, you heard me right, 367 million views. Just the audio version of the song has over 100 million listens. That's a powerful song that people love. And how did it get to be that way? Shadiness. Whether you agree with it or not, you have to admit it worked. And so there you have it, some rappers who have done some rather shady things in order to get to the top of their genre. So do you think what they did was shady, or do you think they were justified in their shady acts? Actions. Also, do you know another rapper or two who have done shady things to get to the top? Let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on King Trending. Simple reminder on how to enter our brand new giveaway. We will be giving away either an iPhone X Max, the new iPad mini, or a MacBook Pro. It's really your choice. So be sure to leave a like, comment the keyword, subscribe, and turn on notifications to enter the giveaway. It's really that simple. Go for it.